Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Banjo-Kazooie. Last video, we finished up in Mad Monster Mansion. And in this video, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get some overworld jikis that were missing, and hopefully I'll also be able to go back to Freeze Easy Peak and grab that jiggy that we've been neglecting for quite some time now that we got the uh, running shoes. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab the overworld jiggy by Freeze Easy Peak first. So go ahead and use the shock jump pads to come up to the second level. You can use that pad there to get you a mumbo token. Uh, and then you want to come over here and you want to hit the flight pad switch. It'll activate a flight pad right in the middle of the area, right by where you go to Mad Monster Mansion. You need to run as fast as you possibly can, because you'll probably only have a second or two by the time you reach the pad. Uh, fly up, it actually shatters once it's gone, so if you miss it, you'll have to go back and do it all over again. And then you'll want to fly through this tunnel. So make sure you don't hit the ground, or else you'll have to go through this again. And then just go ahead and fly to the top. And voila, there is your Jiggy. Which makes it, I think, the seventh overworld Jiggy, so... We have one more to collect. We'll save that for later, though. We're gonna go ahead and we're going to race Boggy in an attempt to get that 10th elusive Jiggy from Freeze Easy Peak. I was doing a practice type file that I have yesterday just so that I knew what I wanted to record today, and I gotta tell ya, I definitely was not having very good luck with this. But hopefully, now that I've taken a break and coming back to it, I'll be alright and we can actually win against Boggy. So. We've already gone through this. I tried to do this without the running shoes, which actually made it physically impossible. Uh, once you go to Gobi's Valley and you learn the last move in the game, and you're able to use the running shoes, you just come back to Freeze Easy Peak whenever you're ready and race Boggy. You're very, very fast and you're very able to keep up to him. But the thing is, he likes to cut. Uh, I find going through these gates is really difficult because he just like gets right up in your face and it's really irritating. You can see I got behind there. Luckily it's pretty easy to catch up. And you'll also notice I am like miles ahead of him. Um, but he's programmed to speed up when he's behind. I mean, he's not that fast normally. I mean, look how fast he caught up to me. So. This can be a bit of a challenge, um, just because of the way that Boggy is programmed and because he likes to push and shove and get in your way. Uh, I do recommend jumping if you can to kind of get a head start, like off this present for example, and just get way ahead of him. And then hopefully you'll be able to win. I think I got it this time. Yes! Oh man, I had a world of trouble with that last time I tried. I seriously tried, I think, three times before I just got frustrated and gave up, but... Luckily, I was able to do it my first try today, which is great, because now that we've got that, we're able to just grab that Jiggy and get out of here. And then, Freeze Easy Peak is officially finished! That is the 10th Jiggy, and that is another world done and out of the way, which is great. Might as well grab this extra life while I'm here. Although, I don't think I'll need it, or at least I hope I won't need it. At this point in the game, we're nearly done, so... I guess I'll just go back the way I came in order to leave the level. So let's get out of here, and at this point we are ready to open up World 8, which I guess I will do after we grab the next overworld jiggy. Definitely not looking forward to going to World 8, like stalling it as long as I possibly can just because I don't want to get it over and done with. But um, I'm actually doing post commentary today. Uh, because when I recorded this, I just had audio issues. It recorded, but for some reason it didn't record in the best quality. So unfortunately, I have to go back and re-commentate over these videos. Which, you know, sometimes happens, but since I'm doing it on the Xbox, it has autosave, and you can't actually go back, which is kind of a shame. So, just if, if I sound different or I speak in, like, past tense, it's because this is post-commentary. 
Um, you can use the flight pad to get to the jiggy on Grunty's uh, in Grunty's eyeball here, but I watched one of Dark Minded Sith's videos and he actually uh, showed that trick in his video, just hopping onto the hat and then hopping onto the nose. Uh, you do have to destroy that glass in her eyeball though, so be careful of that. You can see I nearly slipped and fell trying to get back up, but I personally find that's a lot easier than using the flight pad because then you have to go and activate the flight pad like over again and that's just a total pain. So that are that is all the overworld jiggies that we had to collect. We still have two more to do, but we're gonna get those soon after we complete the next two levels. So now our next task at hand is to open up world eight and uh, to go ahead and get its terribleness started. It's definitely the hardest level in the game. Has the reputation for being the hardest level in the game. And uh, I, I didn't do so hot in this level, like I really wasn't too happy with my run of it, but you know what, it's okay to show some fail every once in a while. And sometimes, if you show the fail, people will pat you on the back and say, like, I know that feeling, bro. And sometimes you just laugh together, cry together, and then everything is all good. So this is actually the entrance to our next world, although the door is not open. So. That's perfectly normal, so come over here over to these boxes, and if you climb all the way up, you'll be able to activate a cauldron. Uh, you don't have to do this now, you can do this later because we will be filling up the water, but that creates a shortcut just outside the area. That's kind of a really short uh, shortcut, I don't really find that to be too useful, but you know, maybe there's a person out there that uses it so I shouldn't rag on it too much. Go ahead and hit that switch, which is going to raise the water level, and will allow us to get into that little cave there. And then if you didn't activate the pot before, now the water level is raised, you can just go up and crawl in there anyway, so. Once we go through here, we should be able to actually activate the entrance to the level. Lots of crawling. I don't know why. I don't know why Mad Monster Mansion in this world in particular have really a lot of steps to open up uh, the area. There's also a dead end over here. Um, I think I just went down here just to check it out to be double sure there was nothing here. And to my knowledge, I really can't think of it at any point in time where there is actually legitimately anything there. I think it's always just a dead end to throw you off. At least in my experience, there might be like a, st a stop and swap item there or something, although I really highly doubt it. Anyway, once you destroy that grate, you can come over here to our next painting, which is going to open up our next world, which is a ship level! Oh, joy. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is going to be Rusty Bucket Bay. So, for those of you who have played, you're probably moaning and groaning, uh, just as I was when I started to play this level. And for those of you who haven't played this game, well, look forward to a little bit of uh, fail and things like that, because we're definitely going to be getting a little bit of that in this level. So, World 8 is upon us, and uh, I'm just going to hold my breath and I'm going to go right in. Okay, so... Uh, when I started the level, I just decided to ignore everything else on the outside of the level, and I wanted to show off a particular uh, room on the ship first. Of course, I'm a little bit directionally challenged in this level. Don't know why, I always have a hard time navigating around it for whatever reason. But eventually I found my way. I want to go to the right and climb up these boxes, and the first little uh, pipe area you come to with a door. Go ahead and uh, go into this area. And this is actually the engine uh, room of the ship. So, most people, I think, uh, a lot of the Let's Plays I've watched, a lot of people have done this room first, and that's why I came down here. I figured, well, you know what, I'll try and do this first. Even though, when you're playing on the Xbox, it is entirely possible to play this level last. There's also a honeycomb piece in here I figured I'd grab while I was down here. 
Um, I kind of plan to do this last because if you're playing on the Xbox, everything is saved. So all your notes are saved, all your Jinjos and things like that, and you don't have to go back and collect any of those things. However, if you play on the N64 version, if you ever die in a level, you have to actually go and you have to recollect all of the notes. They do not get saved. So if you're playing on the N64 version, I really highly recommend that you do this Jiggy first, and you get this Jiggy first. Um, the reason for that is because this room is filled with just death. Uh, you can fall off of these pipes that are spinning very, very easily. You can get chopped up by those saw blades very easily. Um, there's a way to slow them down so you don't get chopped up. Um, and there's just a lot of room for uh, error and things like that. And if you do fall down into those pits, by the way, it is an instant death. So there's two switches in this room. If you go ahead and you pound down on one of them, it's going to slow down the propellers on the back of the ship. And as you can see, there's Jiggy in there. Um, that Jiggy is the one that I think gives people the most trouble, uh, just because it's uh, quite difficult to get to. And you're kind of in a bit of a frenzy trying to grab it. So I decided when I was playing that I was going to try and get this Jiggy first just for the hell of it. And if, you know, I didn't get it first or I failed, then, you know, no big deal because my notes are going to be saved anyways. I haven't done anything else in the level and I would just come back and try it later. So you need to go and hit one of the switches first. It doesn't matter what order you do this in. Um, and then you want to go over here and hit the second one. I recommend hitting the second one as soon as the switch, uh, as soon as the little grating area, the one you got to step over here, is like halfway done, so then you can actually hop across it right away. And as you can see, there's a timer for this. So, uh, you need to go ahead and you need to go outside of the ship and find your way to the back of the ship in the water and crawl through the propellers and get the jiggy. So, a couple reasons this is stressful is because this is timed. Um, you can fall on your way out trying to get out of this room to get the jiggy. Um, if you get into the propeller and you manage to grab the jiggy but you don't manage to get out, it actually is an instant death. The propellers will chop you up immediately. And watch the fail in this video. So when I was playing this, um, for some reason I just bolted, I just went in whatever direction I wanted, and um, the propellers are definitely not on the front of the ship. <laughs> so like an idiot, I went to the front of the ship. My oily water in you plunge, you'll lose air while in that gunge. Um, but I decided not to cut it out just because there wasn't really like a good stopping point and I had collected a lot of notes and things like that. A simple task, you were sure, but Grunty's engines start once more. Ha Grunty. So I definitely bunged that up something fierce. But um, it's not too big of a deal because all I have to do is just go back to that engine room and hit those switches again and just go in the opposite direction, the right direction next time and it won't be too big of a deal. Um, over here is the back of the ship, obviously. I also decided to leave this in just because uh, Grunty explains um, that the water in this level is actually full of like oil and toxin and stuff like that. So when you're underwater, your water or your air meter drains twice as quickly. And even when you're above water, um, your air keeps on draining. So as you can see, it's a level with a lot of um, things that can kill you, a lot of really frustrating things, and I think that's why this is one of the uh, more notorious levels. So um, unfortunately, I'm not doing a whole lot in this level in this video. I just kind of bunged it up and uh, explained a couple of things. So uh, if you go ahead and you dive under, you'll see that Grunty's gonna explain about the air. And you can also see, you know, your air drains very very quickly so just keep that in mind as you explore on in the level and even above water as you can see the air meter isn't going down you have to actually climb up to, onto a box or a ladder or something so we're going to uh, go ahead and I'm going to continue on in Rusty Bucket Bay in the next video and uh, hopefully I'll have a little bit more luck so thanks for watching guys and I will see you next time